Yes, guys, I'm Sai. Welcome back to Ace Podcast Nation. We're here at the Premier Inn in Pentwin again. Big shout out to them and a massive thank you, as always, for hosting us. And uh, delighted, thrilled, no less, uh, almost like exhilarated because we've waited so, so long to do this podcast. It's been nearly probably two years in the making, but uh, I'm absolutely ecstatic to welcome uh, author, Two books now, Mr. Tony Rivers. How are you, my friend? Good evening, Simon. How are you? Like you said, yeah, it's been a while in the making, haven't it? And um, we've uh, uh, we finally got this juncture, which is nice. Yeah, and I think, like, look, we could have done podcasts at various points and talked about football and talked about this and that. And I'm, you know, I'm sure we'll touch on football later. But but I think it was important that we did this at the right time. Yeah, I think you understood all the way through that, that I... It was still a work in progress, really. Um, as I've as I've said, and I, we've said in our promo online that um, we could have um, released it a year ago, but we knew there was still a lot of work to do um, to achieve our uh, our main goal. Yeah, and I think, like you say, having had a good look at it over the last you know day or so, the book is special, and I think. Like you could have, like you said, you could have put it out six months ago, but the, the Thank de- you attention for to saying. detail, mate, is is important. But we, don't just take my word for it. Like, um, just looking, like there's a few quotes of people talking about the book. Um, Graham up north said, uh, "Bold, bold over about the amount of time, energy, sheer knowledge put into this outrageously deep tome by uh, Tony Rivers and Co. Literally, no stone left unturned during that particular odyssey." a fitting legacy of an amazing clobber scene that I grew up in. Um, Magnetic book has finally landed, and I must say it is a thing of beauty. This one is definitely worth the wait. So, I mean, that one straight away, like, and I've seen a lot of, you know, quotes and and reviews, Mm -hmm. if you like, of it. Like, they have been really up here, you know? Yeah. Um, Impressive. Yeah, you're right. The last couple of weeks, I think it's because... Um, our first batch of orders, we did the pre-order in middle of December, I think. What what we didn't want to do is we didn't want people's money and then they'd have to wait months and months. So we just kept it back and kept it back as long as we could. Um, because some books we've seen in the past, um, they've taken people's money and then um, you wait in six to nine months for your copy, but we didn't want to do that. Um, but then the first batch, the main batch that's gone out from the um, the printer's warehouse, they've all been delivered now. So people are getting their copies. Yeah, and, and, and people are, are reviewing it already. Which, um, uh, and uh, you know, I have to say, it's been um, it's been quite um, uh, um, touching. Well, yeah, I bet. Yeah, yeah. The thing is, you put so much hard work into it, mate, and so much time that having that feedback and from from peers from people people you don't know as well you know it's it's, yeah. it's it's massive isn't it in terms of feeling like you've achieved your goal and achieve it you know what you set out to do another one you had um jamie harrison says uh, tony rivers yeah it, it took some compiling that did uh, i wasn't expecting it to be nearly as uh, near as de- deep and detailed Little touches like the Nick Hayward interview, uh, those original pioneers who stocked it all in the early 80s to sum up how big a job it was. Be proud of it, mate. It's a perfect legacy. That was, that was feel like a legacy. Um, I hope so. Mm. Yeah, I hope so. Um, uh, Sean, who assisted us on copy editing uh, and proofreading, along with James, of course, my co author, we. Um, you know, we work together um, and we try to be as meticulous as possible uh, throughout the whole process. And they're both far more professional than I am mm-hmm. um, in the literary world. Um, you know, I've done a book before, but it was more or less, um, uh, it was written for us. But obviously, I, I wrote it, but then it was, yeah. uh, it, it, went, it went down on the page. Um, from the publishers, and um, but we've had to do this, you know, ourselves, really. So, uh, just to 
do a couple more of these kind of quotes. And one thing which sticks out from this quote from uh, Graham Kerr is it says, history as it was not reinvented for social media clout. And I think that was the, one of the first things that I noticed and I'm you know, only part way through it in terms of reading yeah, yeah. it properly. And it um, was like, you could have gone a certain route, I guess, with certain aspects of it, but you've gone with the kind of historical fact and the way it is and you in and i know it straight away you clarified a few things which maybe uh i don't know myths i guess would be the, the yeah same I, type of thing. I think so there's been a, yeah there's been a lot of myths told um yeah um we wanted to um you know do something that um that hasn't been hasn't been spoken yeah. about before there's been some great um uh, clothes, menswear related books, casual type books in the past, like like casuals. Mm. Uh, good mate of mine, Phil Thornton, um, and Sean. He had, uh, you know, he, he 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 was to do with that as well. Um, dressers for Graham Care, another good mate. Um, that was brilliant. Um, but they, it, it, we we've we've made it into more of a niche uh, niche subject really yeah. even though even though there's a lot of um uh um facets to this story this is more you know um obviously the story of uh, Massimo Mosti. yeah and i think uh oh, before i ask you that i think i want to kind of in terms of the reviews there's there's more but i want to kind of finish up with this sort of review but with this one from uh, Professor Andrew Groves, I think it is. Tell yeah. me about that one, because I know when we spoke at the launch on Saturday, um, it might have even been before that, like that was something which <coughs> really struck you. Yeah, Andrew Groves, um, he's a professor of fashion uh, in London, and he also is a director of the Westminster Mandarin Archives. So um, yeah, it's a pretty big deal. Um, and. He's had a couple of uh, images on Instagram the last year or two that we were interested in um, that we couldn't source anywhere else, uh, and he helped us use, um, use them. But as he said, as he said in his um, post the other day, he said um, he weren't really he didn't he didn't know what to expect from it. Um, uh, yeah, I read that. I think I read this one. It's a bit long, but like, okay. I would like to read it in in full because I think it kind of tells a story of how the book has been received in Thank these you. early weeks. Um, so Professor Andrew Grove said, uh, so much of the history of the design, production and consumption of menswear in the UK has not been researched, make it impossible to get a sense of how the design of menswear business developed, particularly during the late uh, 70s and 80s. When I was messaged, messaged on here almost two years ago by the magnetic chaps, James and Tony, uh, about a Stone Island Marina jacket I had just posted. I didn't think much of it at first. They wanted to use the image for a book they were writing. Delayed late last year, I feared the book might not happen or that it would just be photos reminiscing on a casual culture. Uh, I needn't have feared, it is exceptional. Through meticulous picture research and first-hand accounts, it builds an astonishing in-depth record of how independent retailers of menswear developed and thrived during this period. The complexities of retail in various towns are thoroughly explored from Brighton to Guildford to Newcastle to Huddersfield and elsewhere and everywhere in between. It is the sort of focused and dedicated first-hand research you would kill for a PhD researcher to produce. I cannot imagine the amount of work that has gone into this book, but it is apparent on every single page. Uh, a significant hole in menswear research has been filmed, filled, not by an academic, but by two people who were there knew and continue to know the right people and have their trust to tell the story in a way that has allowed this incredible book to be produced. Like to me, if I wrote a book and I had a review like that mm. from a person like that, you kind of, that would really, I don't know, I can't even think of the right word to describe it. Do you know I what know, I mean? Like it's special that, isn't it? I spoke to James um, pretty soon after we read mm. that and, uh, yeah, I think we're both buzzing off that. Um, it's a it's it's a lovely uh, testimony of our work. Um, 
and and he's not alone so you know um Ray Bacon from what he's so so generous with his time um I'm glad that um uh we could um document um the the glory years really of Woody's and uh, yeah Ray, Ray was uh, lovely give us uh, give us a cracking interview you know and also um uh gave us some of his contacts in the fashion world but he's um he's been thrilled with the book which um which is was really uh really nice to know amazing that is, that is really amazing like just the reaction to it is just been incredible for me to see as someone who you know just been speaking to you like just about yeah, yeah. it and where it is and stuff like that so i might kind of only imagine what it's been like for you and james um Obviously, we discussed like how long we've been wanting to do this podcast, and I'm like I said, I'm so glad that it's the right time and, and yeah, everything's yeah. fallen into place. Uh, Saturday, you had the the official launch, I guess. Uh, well, it was the official <coughs> launch up in Merthyr, yeah, um, which I was, you know, lucky enough to attend and very honoured to attend as well. Like, what was the what was that like to to have an official launch like that, and, and what was the feedback at the launch? Uh, initially, we had we had a small one in Mountain Ash, my hometown. Um, a friend of mine, Mark Anthony, he recently um, um, he had in, he got an independent record shop in, and movies and um, mo uh, music and movies called. He moved from a smaller location into this bigger location, so it was nice for me to be able to do some of the frame as well, uh, you know, to help promote the venue. So a few people turned up there, but. Um, I, I said it was the official launch in Merthyr, but we've got we've got a few few others. But it was nice that um, uh, so many people attended on Saturday. Yeah. But the, the weather ruined it a little bit. Yeah, but, it was um, it? yeah, it was uh, it was still lovely to obviously yourself because you've been uh, um, a source of great help um, and give us some uh, lovely content, um, video uh, and uh, online. It's been uh, it's been great. Um, and it was nice to see Kaylee and Sean there. Who, um, Kaylee, uh, Kaylee J Photography, who uh, came around with me several times to different locations to take photos. And yeah, it was uh, it was good to see um, see so many people there. Yeah, and it seems like you mentioned um, Kaylee there. Like it seems like there was a kind of group of people behind you. You mentioned um, Simon earlier. Like there was a group of people around you behind you whatever you want to say who was yeah. kind of helping you out and stuff like that like obviously gareth hopkins he's um uh he helped me with uh, uh several interviews and um die hutchinson dave hutch he's got um he's got a cracking uh back catalog of uh vintage photos from um from late 80s early 90s mm. uh yeah, he's got several photo albums and uh, yeah i think he was uh he, me he mentioned uh, something online the other day that uh you know I, he was really proud that uh, his photos got in the book which uh, which is nice to you yeah. you know um uh yeah it was like julian kendall came over from bristol julian got us in contact with um john anthony um yeah it was all links along the way you know um simon quinn was there who um He's got a mega collection of um, uh, vintage magazines that we used, um, and um, yeah, it's um, like I said, it's nice to have that that network of friends yeah. and um, like a uh, collaboration, isn't it? Of, of people, your friends, people you know, and stuff. That yeah, it was good. Really everybody, everybody could help out in their own little way, you know. Like. So obviously we're gonna kind of delve. There's far too much in the book for us to go through chapter by chapter, and obviously you know you want people to buy the book, to yeah, get yeah. the kind of content. Uh, went in from 1986 to 1993. It was a fantastic era, not just for not just for Masi but uh, menswear as a whole. Um, it was the to quote um, Justin from um, Bristol, who was. Uh, from Toki, sorry, who he helped us with. Uh, he was a buyer for Cody originally. Uh, he said it was the birth of menswear. And it was because um, when you're talking about the casual era uh, and, and the sportswear, which we, we you know, we, we do in the book, I think um, 
the tennis way and the uh, you know the golf era. Um, it was you know it was it, it was smart in his in his ways, but uh, I didn't really see uh, men's way uh, as being that as that important as when um, all all the top Italian labels and French labels started to uh, it evolved, didn't it? Yeah, it did. Um, yeah, you had you know you know you had people from probably 80, 82, 83, you know, started wearing uh, proper design labels like Burberry, Armani, Paul Raffarin, and then they emerged from there. And there was the that era of um, uh, the continental uh, clothes. It was it was just fantastic, especially when being a kid coming into all that. Um, yeah, that was I was real exciting times. Yeah, like I think we spoke about before when you when we did one um, podcast in lockdown about like that being a sort of a young a young man in that sort of and being interested in the clothes, the music, the football, everything which kind of came with the yeah, sort yeah. Of casual culture. It was an exciting, special time, wasn't it? And the you thing know? is, these independent stores um, they've been quite overlooked, and we wanted to. Um, uh, we wanted to pay homage mm. to some of these top independents, um, you know, not just Woody's, um, you know, Another we, well -known we've got a Brighton, well -known ones, yeah, we've got a Brighton, Bristol, Newcastle, Manchester. We've, um, hopefully we've covered a lot of these important, um, uh, clothes shops and they were important. Um, and I either 86, uh, through to 93, you could go into, um, like I go back to Woody's, you can go to Woody's and there'd be 100, 150 different, different brands to choose from. Um, it was remarkable. The uh, designers, it, it, it must have blown up during this period, you know? Yeah. It's, um, it's like, it's difficult to know. Cause I feel like I could jump around a little bit and like mm -hmm. straight away from some of the stuff you just said there and we could jump around, but I want to try and keep it a bit more structured for my sake more probably course, or yeah, your yeah. sake but just because otherwise i'll go off on one and i will literally be going subject <laughs> to subject and we'll be all over the place but, um, <laughs> that's fine like i said we won't be able to cover all no, that one night. no and i and i, we, I we, also we, we just spoil it we'll well. do, we do a part two yeah that's it but um in terms of even like you mentioned sportswear with the golf and and the, the tennis wear like it did evolve and the kind of the definition of sportswear evolved as well, didn't it? And I think just yeah, overall, definitely uh, in this country, as uh, we as we touch upon in the book, um, sportswear in this country had a different um, uh, connotation than sportswear in Italy and the USA. Um, CP Company was known as sportswear uh, um, in the early days, and yes. Probably a lot of Italians still class it as as, as sportswear, yeah. but to us, sportswear was you know your, your Adidas and your Nike. Um, uh, a bit later on, then you know you you know Lacoste and uh, yeah, I could I could Pringle and stuff. Like yeah, that, I yeah, I could I could I could go on. So let's go like almost back to the start in a way. Where did the the idea? to kind of do this anthology and cover that era. Where did the idea come from? And then also in kind of follow up to that, what was the period from the idea to the, you actually becoming, no, this is the thing we're gonna do. Not yeah, that, yeah. You know, we all have ideas and oh, we should do this or we should do that. I remember um, I was supposed to go to Cinquata. It was um, uh, an exhibition in Blackburn uh, curated by Gary Aspden uh, of Adidas Special and uh, CP Company. It looked great, but I, I think I had COVID at the time, so we had to um, uh, we had to pull out. Uh, to, two cars of us going up, but James went along, and after it was, it was only a few days after um, uh, after he returned home, he texted me. I've still got a text somewhere. He said. Do you, you know, do you fancy um, doing a book on um, on that period of um, of Austi coming into the UK? Because it hadn't really been touched upon. Mm. 
uh, it has in a way, but um, no, not in not in this it's way. It's like Stone Island and, and CP. They've they've done some brilliant literature over the years. They've done some fantastic books, but it's more from the design point of view. Um, we wanted to come in street level, street yeah. level up. Um, why why people were wearing it? Um, where were they getting it from? You know, who's bringing it into the country? Um, yeah, we want we wanted we want to co cover all this. Um, yeah, and we wanted to try and do it in as meticulous as possible. And I hope we've achieved it. I think so, mate. Certainly from, from what I've seen and what I've obviously heard other people say, and it looks like you've achieved your goal without a doubt, mate. Um, but my reply to James, my reply straight away was yes, because mm -hmm. I've been looking for something like this for years. Um, like a project? Yeah, I, I project tried to do a documentary about dressing, but... I added hip hop into it, I added rave into it, and it was a bit too much altogether. But this was something, you know, that um, uh, uh, it was a subject matter that both of us knew a lot about. Um, and we knew the people who we wanted to speak to. Yeah, I was going to say, it's, it's, it's a subject that, like, obviously, you're very passionate about, isn't it? Like clothing and stuff like that, particularly yeah. those brands. And it's an era that you're familiar with, you know? And, like I say, all the people, the people who you know through various things yeah means that you could get contributors and that was one of the things i would i'm going to trust myself now and i'm going to start jumping about a bit so no i apologize problem. but um, <laughs> like obviously you've got a, a massive amount of contributors in the book yeah yeah um how difficult was that to kind of navigate getting the right contributors did you come up against you know come up across like any sort of time wasters or people, maybe not even time wasters, maybe just people who you thought it's not right. No, the majority have been really generous and a lot, most of them, they're either James Smith or, or me, mine. Yeah. And people we've known for um, decades. So makes it a lot easier. Yeah. When, when we, when we took the idea to them, you know, obviously there's a bit of apprehension. They don't know um, what, um, uh, what it's all about and what it's entailing. So, but everybody everybody was great and um but these are the people we knew we knew 100 percent they the ones we need to speak to yeah yeah um because it's like i've i've mentioned it before there's no football rivalry in there even though some some of these people in here were enemies yeah back in the day yeah but um you could you could follow um you know everybody follows different teams but when it comes to when it, when it came to that that dressing era, uh, we we were all the same. Mm. You know, it was. Um, well, it's funny, you know, because obviously eighty six to ninety three was a little bit before my sort of time. Yeah, yeah. Getting into clothes and stuff like that. But even you know, in the sort of mid nineties, late nineties, when I started to get into it as like a young, like a teenager or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Is, even if you saw people like, you know, especially as young men, you kind of clash with other young men and stuff like that. Like there's that, I don't know what you want to call it. Like just masculinity thing in it. Like when kid blokes are young and they used to have a drink on a Friday night and then quite often ends in carnage or whatever. But like you could be walking down a street with your missus or your mates and you could see someone who's got like a nice Stone Island coat or a nice CP company coat yeah, or whatever. Yeah. And it's like you'd have a little nod or whatever, and sometimes it would lead to conversation. I think particularly as you've, as I got older, it was something that you, you could end up speaking to a stranger about. Definitely, I know what you mean. Um, it's, it's like a weird thing, like rivalries yeah. and stuff like that aside, it would still almost... I remember you in a quote about the rave scene, about when it started, uh, people who, who joined you, then it'd be like seeing a spaceship land, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, a total different uh universe yeah and it, it, it was like that in ways when you're a kid and you go to the football and you get to see all these people dressing more different than you've ever seen before and um i i found that early you know i was um i think i was 14 when i first started going independently down down to watch the city and you can tell you know there'd be a group of boys here a group of boys there and um no, you know, it'd be just something. It'd be just something about them, like you know, and something different about them, uh, and you start to assess them what was going on. Yeah, like 
with the book as well is like obviously there's kind of a few different sides to it obviously one one side is obviously the, the story of the the Osti family and stuff like that and i noticed early on in the book you say this isn't going to be the story of the Osti family because it's not your story to tell this you know it's their friend friends and, and their family yes it's their story to tell which i thought was a nice touch i really i really like that but also then you said about like the football violence link, which is forever there, especially with like Stone Island and CB Company Co. Yeah. But and you kind of said about that, but then you also can't ignore this fundamental link between football terraces and these labels. Yeah, it was um, eight, through the, through that time period of the eighties, football. Um, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't anywhere near. It was being worn. But it wasn't on mass mm. um, as it as it as it came through yeah. um, as it came through into the next decade. Um, CP and Stone Island in the eighties were just an, was just another label. Mm. It wasn't you know the statement that it later became. Um, and going back to the Osti family, Lorenzo Osti, Massimo's son, obviously Massimo passed away. Um, quite a while ago now, sadly. Um, but Lorenzo, he's been involved with um, the design for CP Company for a while, and we wanted um, uh, we wanted to reach out to him and let him know this was happening. So we did, and he he, he was um, he was cool about it, and he's liked stuff of ours, our, our promo stuff. And um, I hope um, when he gets to see the um, uh, copy, I hope you know, I hope he. It, it, it's a nice legacy for the family. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Funny enough, when I had um, Johan on, um, which is a podcast which is coming soon from Camp Renesis, mm. um, which is a Welsh label, he um, he bumped into Lorenzo um, yeah, yeah. in London, like just by coincidence. And he was, you could tell, like when he was telling the story, he was quite starstruck by it because I think it's not someone you necessarily, no, I bet. it's not someone you expect to bump into, even in London. But yeah, then yeah. also, it's not someone that everybody would recognize, you know? It's not yeah. like, I don't know, plucking a name up with this guy, like Harry Styles or something like that. I say Harry Styles because I saw him yesterday on the football. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. It's, but you know what I mean? <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like a yeah, big yeah, famous yeah, name. Yeah, it's yeah. like, like some, you know, certain people or people who are interested in the labels yeah. and stuff like that would maybe know who he is. And even them, I think some of them might miss him in the street. But uh, yeah. No, of course. it, 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 it we spoke with CP Company's people, a little bit of a language barrier, um, but yeah, I think they, um, I think they understood in the end what we were trying to do, and hopefully you now, uh, because some of the reviews they've, they've obviously been reading them online, and um, yeah, hope, uh, you know that uh, they uh, send them a copy. They appreciate it. Mm. So um, obviously, you had a bit of a delay, sort of end of last year, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I know that was, I, I, I would imagine that was a particularly stressful time. Um, the last six months probably nearly killed me. <laughs> uh, it was, it was tough. Like I said, Sean and James, far more professional than I could ever be. Mm. They worked in the industry um, for quite a while. So they, 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 uh, they were focused. They wanted everything as perfect as can be. And um, Sean's proofreading is un unbelievable out of this world. And uh, anyone will be able to testify that when, uh, when, they, read, uh, when they read the work. Absolutely. Um, so w which one of them was sending my trailers back all the time for like little details changed? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was yeah, like, yeah. like no, but yeah, I understood yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And of course, it, yeah, I'd that's, be exactly that's, the same. That's, that's what we, that's what we, um, our philosophy for the book as well, you know, um, which uh, in the end it, it, it was paying dividends, mm. you know. Um, yeah. But like the way I viewed the trailers just very quickly was like, you know, I'd said I would do this for you and I wanted to do it how you, like I wanted it to be how you envisaged it and what your yeah. vision of the trailer was. And if that meant that like, we were going back and forth hundreds of times, that's fine. Like yeah, it, it I think we did, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, I think on the last yeah. one, wasn't it? They were, we, it was like little details, but those details matter, mate. And I think hey. you can see that in the book. Details matter 
yeah. if you're going to do something get to a high level. Get to King, our graphic designer, um, he'll, he'll tell you how, um, how many hours we, we, we work together. Uh, pain's taken at times, but like I said, it's worth it in the end. Hundred percent. Um, to get you know um, to get where we are today. Um, this is something that Sean said. And, uh, he said he wanted the consistent house style, spellings, quotes, italicized foreign words, etc. It was just to take it up a notch mm. because when you've got people from um, the academic world, like Professor Groves. And some someone as big in fashion industry as Ray Baker, and then everyone else in between. You know, if um, you know, if uh, if if you can impress them, you know, it's a start, and yeah, it's right. a start. Impress them, you, you, you have not have it, there, but you know, it's a it's a yeah. big it's a big thing, mate. Isn't it? At the end of the day, but um, and I, it sound it might sound ridiculous, but money was never. It was, it was never about the money because we could have we could have published this a year ago yeah um and we could have made money a year ago but um we need to we needed to strive that extra take that extra mile and um yeah it's, it's hopefully you know it um uh we get the recognition for it now yeah and i think at the end of the day that that pride and that passion for the project Whatever you're doing, whether it's a book or a, or a documentary or what you know, whatever it may be, if you haven't got that passion for it and that pride in in wanting it to be the best version of whatever it may be, it will shine through. And like you said, you can you could put out a book a year ago and it would have been all right. People would have probably enjoyed it, but yeah. would it have been I, I, the I, next I, I, level I, 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 thing? They don't they don't take praise well the two boys, but they've been outstanding, and I'm very lucky to be part of it. I mean, when I mean when I say outstanding, like I said, I've never, never done anything as professional as this. Mm. No, that's good though, then. and I think it shines too in the product itself as well. Like you, like even I knowing what was coming to a certain extent, you know, not massively, but like I had an idea of what was coming. Particularly yeah, yeah. as it got closer, I'd seen some of the images where yeah. I was doing the trailer, and I obviously saw the cover and stuff ahead of time, like. Even knowing what was coming, yeah, I've still been blown away by everything about it. I and that's that, not me saying it. No, to you. no. I, a lot of people have said the same thing. I think nobody knew really what to expect. A lot of people thought it'd be just you know a homage to the casual, <laughs> the casual era. But um, you know, we've gone in a little bit further, and uh, you know than that. Um, yeah. So one of the things um, which caught my eye when I was reading it this morning was you said about um, sort of people claiming to own items which hadn't sort of come out or like, I can't remember the word in a bit, but it, basically they were claiming to own items before they were, they is were it, released. Is it the part of the intro which uh, says, yeah. well, like a lot of some of these modern day, excuse me, collectors and social media influencers as it will but you know they do what they do. But it's nothing what um, nothing what about the story we were. No, to no, tell, no. it was a different different time and different era. And then I think it was alluded to one of that um, um, they there's people out there who um, pretend they were part of yeah, something that they weren't. You know, they but, weren't. And I think judging by the post, certainly from what I've seen, the people you spoke to. It's people who were there, people who lived it and wore it. Oh, of course, you know? of course. And, and we were lucky, you know, you, I'm 51, I think, yeah, 52 this year. Um, but, you know, you get to meet, you get to meet these people over the years. And, um, yeah, and I think that was the thing with the football world. Um, everyone knew each other. And I think as you've, as, as you all grew up, it's like, Going back, to obviously, to your first book, this whole group book is obviously about Cardiff and this and that and all the different things which went into that book. But also, as you all got older, you become friends with all the people who you might have been clashing with. But like I said, the men. we, um, you all got everything, everything is the same in common. Yeah. Um, um, I'm really sorry, I got to just, I am back. You're gonna have to. Can you message Rob Boyle love, um, on Facebook? And he's asking me something about 
the show which he's doing now at eight o'clock. But I obviously can't do anything with it. I'll edit it out, obviously. I just he just messaged me like four or five times. Like, Rob Boyle. Call me at the same minute. Yeah, I like it, mate. It's flowing, nice isn't it? Yeah, and that's it. And I want it, like I said to you before, mate. All my shows are a conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't no, want to sit here. Like I know I've referred to my phone more than yeah, yeah. ever, but it's because I there's certain things I want to make sure I ask about. No, it is but it's I'd rather have it and just like plan it to the head. Yeah. No, of course, uh, yeah. You say again, love? Oh, yeah. Got a clap for the audio. Um, yeah, and I think, obviously, we talked a little bit about the contributors, and I know there was a lot of photos which didn't make the book because you've been posting them on socials and stuff yeah. like that, which kind of ended up on the cutting room floor, for, for lack of a better term. Was there contributors who didn't make it as well? Possibly, but I've got, with obviously since me and James started um, discussing it, I'm in a WhatsApp group with him, and I think my last count, we were on, we were on about four thousand photos Jesus. that we've we've looked at, um, assessed, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, in the end, we've picked uh, probably about. 15 percent of them to uh to make was there make was there many it. was there any photos which you disagreed on like when you wanted it in when you wanted it out um or was it generally a consensus we, we, yeah we, we've had a good we've had a good relationship all the way through a definitely good consensus um uh, we we wanted mainly original prints um how difficult were they to source because mm. obviously like these days you got yeah. photo cameras and and whatnot everyone's got a camera on it in their pocket at all times of course back in the, you know. I, I i think that's why a lot, a lot of people are saying about the detail of it because we you know we we went at it 100 uh, percent trying to get these uh prints and after uh after the cut off we've had even more given to us mm -hmm. which unfortunately didn't make the cut because i had a comment the other day from um uh reese van der Veer. he's uh he's been a brilliant support of uh, of the book all, all since we started but he said one of the boys Kazi oh Carly fan I know Kazi and he said um he said I've seen these photos that didn't make the book you know mm. if um if I, <laughs> if that's the case you know what are the what are the book what are the photos that did um, actually yeah, make the grid really. you know so that's nice to hear yeah. but we got loads more photos to use um to use on our social media pages um and they always evoke really nice, you know, positive um, um, contributions, which is nice, and memories. Yeah, and I think, like, particularly for people who, who lived there, like, they will see a lot of these photos, and they will, it's like, you know, you've got, like, adverts and stuff from magazines. They will look at that and they go, oh, you know, I remember that. Or, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's, it's kind of what the, the, ma the magazines, it's, um, they would, you know, a big part of, of that era. Um, I'll go back to that. That, this, that were photos that rekindling a lot of um, nice memories, people. Mm. But yeah, we obviously we touch on the magazines in there. Um, it was a different era, pre-internet. So your, your source of um, source of information then, if you um, if you're an addresser, was either word of mouth. Um, I, I'd, I'd be on the phone every Monday to people from all over the country like and um who was battling who mm -hmm. and who was wearing what and yeah. you know it sounds fucking ridiculous nah, I'm gonna, uh, but... it's, what, <laughs> it's what it was though man yeah. on a monday i was on my nan's phone and we would that's it, that's all we were doing was discussing what was going on on mm -hmm. saturday he was wearing what yeah it was like um you know i'd have a phone call from a mate neil from wrexham he said uh you know he got wolves wolves wearing gant and uh you know if you you'd be alerted to that then like mm. um that's what it was pre pre-internet yeah simpler life mate, before the, the magazines internet. um obviously we touch upon it uh, uh stone and cp uh, they had some uh yeah, great advertisements uh late 80s early 90s and um some of the time they they, they tell you then they give a list of shops around the country so i i have spoken about it in there but um Cardiff, you know, we'd, we'd be in the fourth division at the time. Uh, still taking a few away, you know, taking a few away on, on the train, vans and that. 
most of the boys would want to want to find the pub first of all as soon as we landed but there was a few of us who wanted to go to these shops you know when you know you could go to chesterfield northampton um, cambridge blackpool Torquay, uh, vast array of these um smaller cities but they all are cracking independent shops mm. and you'd head for them you know head for them and have, mm. a little, uh, have a little nose and a look yeah you know, it's, it's a, it seems like a bygone era than it it is like but, yeah but like a lot of people are born about uh they say oh the younger generation they um they don't know what they they missed um i get that to a i, I get that to a small extent like uh, yeah i have this i have this discussion a lot with people um, so like i look back on the 90s personally as like the best era for clothes and music and football and, like everything but yeah. but then people like Becky will point out to me and people will point out it's big everyone thinks that about the the era that they kind of came up in when they yeah. were sort of 20 you know teens like because that's your kind of formative years is when you're going out partying and you're and like yeah, it's like free this, you. the the well documented start of acid house was in the 80s but uh i think it was terry farley who was actually contributed in the book uh, from boys own he um i remember him quoting before and saying it, as good as the 80s were you know as good as the start of it was the 90s the 90s uh, house scene was uh you know incredible mm. compared to compared to them early um uh, warehouse uh acid house days yeah like you talk about in the book like different celebrities you know starting to wear um stone island and one thing which really struck me was um oh, i've got i forget her name i apologize ringo stars um barbara Bach. Barbara, that's it. yeah well barbara Bach was um she was a su successful actress when she mm. she was in um i don't know if you're a james bond fan but she was in the spy who loved me i got you yeah 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 and uh roger moore got off of that didn't he, in mm -hmm. the end um anyway it's a different story mm -hmm. but yeah the the photos um where she turned up in uh, early Stone Island Telestella. Um, they've been they've been published a few times from uh, uh, from various publications, and you know you you can search them online and see them. We, that's why we we didn't ever use any any stuff that's, um, that we knew has been published before. One or two situations, but um, you know, so we, yeah, fresh. but we wanted a story told with it as well. Um, we just didn't want to put the photo in there. We we wanted to know who took the photo, um, you know, on everything surrounding it, and yeah. which you yeah, know. That makes sense. But Barbara such... Bach, sorry, oh. sorry, so, um I think you know, obviously, that era, they, um, uh, they, it was a listers at the time. Mm. So you know, Massey Moss, he was coming through the ranks, and I think you know, he's probably. I think they were friends um uh you know at least uh, good acquaintances mm. and um, barbara Bach's photos the telestella i think they were taken even before stone island um uh came to the uk because i think uh, we 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 found that there were samples she no, was wearing right. yeah, she was wearing a sample even before, so before even, it even before he was released um, so wait, where, where, what sort of year was that then when? 81 i think 82 was when um uh store 82 83 was when store and obviously became uh uh became a company within their own right but 81 these photos were um were taken uh, which was great um there's i i won't i won't spoil it for the readers but there was a uh, a piece from uh, the original flannels in manchester and mm. uh, uh, guy kids who used to um work there and life in manchester and he mentions a, a coronation actress at the time who um liked the stone in the shop for the cheetah she had bought a stone iron tracksuit in the mid 80s in monaco which is nice and uh, as the internet would say now um you know, she was wearing it before you die so uh yeah that was uh yeah this is, <laughs> these little these little, little stories story. uh, yeah well, this is what so this is what i was going to say just then is i think maybe people i'm just kind of speaking for people i guess but maybe people were expecting almost like a a, a picture book a story you know just off pictures yeah but like you say every picture you've got has got a story 
and everything around it. And I think, again, going back to that detail and stuff, it's like, it's it was so originally called a Fort enjoyable. It was originally called um, Subtext of Fort of Daily. But we were getting so much copy uh, then. Um, we, the three of us, decided between us, it'll, um, we've got to change the name here. And uh, we, we all came up with anthology because a fort the diary wouldn't have done it justice. Um, I'm not sure how many words are in all together, really. I think um, I think you're talking between 90 and 100,000, and that's mm -hmm. um, that's without the hundreds and hundreds of autos. So um, one of the one of the other things which was like was actually a, a learning thing for me. Every day is a school day, as they say. I'd um, I'd never really thought about it I, in, in all honesty, which probably says more like a bit of a shame on me. But I didn't realise what the CP stood for and CP company. Yeah, yeah. And to just kind of get a glimpse into that story and the, and the legal action and the, everything around that as well was, that was so interesting to me. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah, it, it, that's a, that's an interesting story. And uh, yeah, we're, I won't spoil it, but- No, uh, that's why I, I tried yeah, to no, but, around yeah, it a little yeah, bit. No, but, but uh, obviously Chester Perry, yeah. um, and then they had to, uh, they had to change that, but, um, just the the Perry, the, yeah. There's there's, there's a nice there's a nice little um, there's a nice little piece in there from um, a shop. It was called Jonathan Silver and Leeds, and they they had Chester Perry quite early. And there's a little story about when Massey Morsley visited Leeds, um, which is nice. And uh, you know, hopefully people can uh, can relate relate yeah. to that. Like, and I think like just going through it, people will be able to really enjoy all the different stories to each thing, even about the shops, particularly the, the lesser known shops. So people generally, they might know flannels and, and woodies and places like that. Yeah, yeah. But to hear about those independent shops and, and hear about the scene, I think is, is, is fascinating, isn't it? And in, Thank you. Yeah, we've, um, we've, we've had some lovely compliments about it. Um, uh, hopefully we got everything in there that um, you know needed to be told. Yeah, and I think another thing which kind of really caught caught my eye, I guess, was like you pointing out about how it it wasn't as popular as what uh, people would suggest, maybe with hindsight at certain points. No, no, not at all. Because, um, like I said, the we we we, we talk a lot about the shop in um, Lambs Conduit Street in London. Um, that was selling discounted uh, Stone Island CP from like 80, 88, 89 through the mid 90s and around that time it was um, you could go and pick up for, for real bargain prices from there you know and mm. um, but since the internet age and um, uh, the collector's era it's unbelievable what some of these pieces would go for now yeah, but well, like the prices are insane now, anyway, and they but like the real yeah. collectors pieces. Uh, Even the collectors, all know. I spoke to um, somebody recently. Um, these people, these people with a bit of money behind them, you know, good luck to them. But even now, some of them again price out of the market because yeah. since Stone Island been taken over by Montclair, you know, luxury label, um, they are looking for they're looking for the A list market now. Mm. Um, and uh, if you want to try and catch up, you can. Yeah, that's their philosophy now. Yes, yeah, it's, it's it's interesting how it's evolved over time. It really is, and also the other side of that as well is like from a personal point of view, I'd love to be able to go and you know, like some of the collectors and stuff, yeah, get the yeah. real vintage pieces, and and they sort like they spend most of their days like seeking out these sort of rare pieces and stuff. I'd love to just be able to like sit yeah. and look through their collections. Yeah, but a good mate of mine, Midge, Steve Minchell from London, he was he was on in early doors, um, late eighties. Um, but he said at the time he sold, he sold a lot of his gear because he didn't think, he thought it was a fad a mm. couple of years, but obviously the longevity is still there. I know loads of people who had some really nice, you know, Stone Island coats, CP company coats at the higher, higher end prices went. And yeah, then yeah. a few years later, they ended up 
like sell them for yeah, various yeah. reasons. Politically, the, the right wing gone into a later. Mm. They weren't a fascist statement for them mm. then. It was the, you know the badge was seen as this symbol of uh, um, you know they gleaned they gleaned a full reputation that um, you know they wanted to they missed the boat and they um, uh, you know they tried to play catch up and it wouldn't happen no. you know it's uh, I, I kind of I'd like to touch on the the very like early history early, early history of of like the Aussie labels a bit. Um, is that something which you really delve into in the book? We do, years? we do. But um, like I said, we um, it mainly from from eighty six when um, uh, when it was coming more prominent in um, uh, in certain shops around the country. Um, first off, you know, mainly um, Jones, Quincy, Woodhouse. Yeah. Um, which we delve into, and we've had some lovely uh, contributions from um, you know the original owners and different people like that. Incredible, man! Just I'd like, okay, I, I even as as someone like I said, who's just you know just did a little bit of the trailers and stuff. For you like the um, the pride you must feel on the book is yeah. Like, it, yeah I just I like. Just looking at it as a, as a project and, a, and as a product, I, I would urge anyone who's kind of interested in those labels, that 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 culture and stuff like that. It's like almost yeah. like a must, like it's a must-have thing for me. Like I, a real clack design. We, we've you know? been some of the some of the comments already. Like, you know, uh, we're bolder, bolder mm. on ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but that's uh, you know. that's 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 good signs, mate, isn't it? It's nice. It's nice. Um, uh, you know, any 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 work work uh, likes to be recognised. Yeah, know? of course. Yeah, hundred percent. It's like you just what you want, isn't it? Like if yeah. no one's talking about it or they, you aren't getting any feedback, it wouldn't be the the same. Huh. When did you or when did you when did you see when do you think that there was a kind of change on the on the terraces in terms of? We mentioned earlier about the, this kind of sports where the tennis wear and the golf wear, and then like, the sports wear of the Italian brands. I think because it was there was so many labels to choose from um, that year in the eighties. Um, probably, they, to a lot of people, they were just still just one another label. Mm. Um, I started noticing um, CP Company. Um, when I was about 15, 16, because Pavilion in Cardiff, even before Woody's, and um, uh, they, um, they had a little store in Cardiff before they moved, but they they had CP coming in, and they also had um, Bonneville Navy Arctic. Um, uh, we, we were told in we were told in the book that Bonneville Navy Arctic was a lot cheaper to buy in for these independents than um, if they wanted... Um, uh, concession of Stone Island, mm. so it was a lot more independents um, who were uh, buying in CP and uh, Bonneville, and yeah, Pavilion were one of them. And some of our lot were into CP early, but even though um, it wasn't that statement at the time, you know, they were just wearing it because it was a, it was a nice label, yeah. and uh, it was it was they, it was probably catching on around. Um, the country which he was and which we've um, uh, which we found out to to more of an extent mm. what was your what was your label of choice like if you had to pick one out of the three yeah um, I loved Stone Island the early Stone Island it was um, it was something else and it wasn't about the badge mm. it was just uh, the quality yeah. of um, it was something coming so different on it to it was else. yeah the materials that we used and the little style yeah. differences and just things which made it stand out. I, I say I got a coat on one coat on in Belgium, um, that ninety one I think it was, and um, beautiful piece. It was yellow, but it had a balaclava in the hood. And mm -hmm. but it, it, I didn't know anything about Rasso Gomato or probably I didn't know much about Austria at the time. You know, I just it was just because it was a bloody nice, yeah, yeah. nice 
caught mm-hmm. and yeah. uh, but then obviously the internet game came along and you start to learn more um about these um yeah information at your fingertips then isn't it so anything you've got a bit of an interest in you can kind of find yeah out. you knew you, you, you know, know everybody you knew but it was everybody it's been uh it's been talked about a lot more mm. i got um i got a like a stone island bomber jacket which is I'm not sure what year it's from. Yeah, yeah. I got it from a friend of mine, and he's gone missing. As my missus last, she hates it, right? And um, I can't find it. It's in my house somewhere. Yeah. It's co- coincidentally gone missing. But I, I, I'll have to show you it when. Um, Becky one day. Is she? Yeah, she's probably she's, 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 sold on eBay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> so we put it for the cameras. No, it's. Um, but I'd be interested in you having a look at it just because you would know more than me like I'd, I'd be interested to know when it's from and yeah that kind of um, era because it was a uh it's like a weird you, you, shell material you can have a look for the label if you yeah, yeah you like i find this oh yeah yeah, yeah cool. when, when you do but um, yeah on the certified yeah i don't think it's a particularly modern one like i think okay. it might be from back in the day but i don't know vintage, because okay. but i'd be very interested to the original um, vintage uh, Stone Island because they were they were still um, under the CP Company umbrella mm. of Osties. The wash label will have CP Company written on it. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Because they did, obviously didn't have the uh, the super logo and stuff like that. Back it came, later on, yeah. Yeah. came um, later on. Yeah, came later on. So before what we could do, mate, as we kind of roll on because the time yeah, flies, yeah. it's surprising how quick it goes. I thought we could just pick a page, yeah, and uh, you can tell us a bit about it. Cool. So. Um, just flick it up anything. Too long. I'm, I'm Keep going. Keep going. Keep going, is it? <laughs> there. How about that? Yeah, yeah. And um, I'll, what I'll do is I'll get Becky to come and take a photo of it. Well, actually, I'll take a photo of it. And then we can put it on the screen then. This is um, James Mate, um, Nick Sargent from Brighton. Uh, he's been a massive help. Nick has. He, he actually bought a book out, um, one of the original dressing books as a yeah. casual look. Um, that was really good. Um, and Nick was, yeah, one of the... Brighton were, were on it really early doors. Uh, Brighton, Portsmouth. Um, yeah, you're talking... Yeah, there's like that Jack at Copa there. Like, yeah, that's from 86 hours. Yeah, and uh, this, I love this photo of him uh, in the European Cup final um, in Barcelona with uh, AC Milan in 1989. And look, he's going on, his mates going on, and also one of the Italian kids at the back got a Stone Line Marina t-shirt. So, yeah, yeah that, this was, that was when he was developing, you know. Yeah, yeah, and, and you mentioned, um, I think, a couple of the, 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 the international tournaments where it went from, um, I forget the the years it was now, I think it was like 86. 19, 1990 Italia was so one or two. The start, yeah, it was, it, it was, it was, it was, it was coming into his own then. Um, but as we talk about in the book, 92, um, the 92 European Championships um, in Scandinavia, that's when it erupted. And mm. um, like, we want, uh, don't want to reveal too much. Yeah, yeah, but could. yeah, that was when, that was when it started to become on ma- on mass mm. in in England uh, in the UK. Yeah, and then obviously uh, you had a documentary about the Scarborough um, yeah. and stuff like that, and then you started to see it a bit on the on the TV a bit more, wasn't it? That's right. Um, or like you know, not TV, but yeah, we we we, 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 we didn't use those we because we we've got you could get screen grabs of them on mm. on YouTube, but we didn't really want to go delve into the, into the screen clubs because we weren't too sure about the quality. Um, we used one or two actually, but they've come out great. But yeah, I, <laughs> the geek that I am, I remember watching that. It was 1989. Um, it was, a, it was uh, Chelsea, Liverpool was were on a game and that I actually attended uh, Chris, uh, Christmas time. Um, but yeah, they were, they showed footage of that Scarborough Wolves you know, the guy went through the first game of the season. The it was 87, 88. And I always, <laughs> I always remember the time, this kid with the uh, Stoneline Marina jacket on, uh, Stoneline Marina on the back. And I 
I'd have a radar, you know, a radar, like picking up yeah. little things like that. And also one of Chelsea's top heads at the time, he got interviewed. Um, and he had um, he had an early Stone Island jumper on, and the badge was um, yeah the um, the buttons were more the like sewn on instead of uh, you couldn't take it off yeah the badge was like uh, fixed so yeah yeah it was a d- different uh, different style almost yeah like. and he, he had that on but we were going to use that but we didn't in the end mm. but I think you spot them didn't you as yet like uh, you just if you see. You just see it on even now, like I said, th- you know, you could be watching some in oh, the early years, you could go anywhere and like now, 10 a penny and they stole any badges. And it, but then, you know, if you've seen somebody, um, they'd probably, somebody, um, they'd probably be interested in the talk to them, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. 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 and it'd be like, yeah, little nod, yeah, <laughs> mm. yeah, 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 y
Mm. Armani was still king, and um, all all the top heads in the country would, would, would be wearing Armani. But then this this thing started creeping in. Um, and it was it was a, it was a, it was a great look because you had your Brett on um, stripe yacht wear, um, which CP and Co- CP company stone on the bottom. They all you know they all embraced. Um, and yeah, they started to slowly take in Armani to school. Um, but when Armani's last big year probably was 1990. Mm-hmm. And for me personally, anyway, um, it started to fade away because um, because these uh, these were the new kids on the block, yeah. like the new kings for you. Yeah, and yeah. I think it's it's interesting. Do you know, like this random question which has just popped into my head? So I apologize. No, but like. One of the things which struck me probably, I don't know, say 10 years ago or something, you know, I was a bit older and kind of kids and all that sort of thing, was you had all these lads go into the football in like, you know, 500 pound coats and the rest of it. And then they go and have like a scrap and then roll around in the, you know, it with ripped and ripped and blurred and the rest of it. Like, it happened. I, I won't, I won't tell, yeah. I won't go into it, but yeah, it happened to it's, me a few times there. Yeah. It's got to be depressing. I get depressed when yeah. I people just get a bit of coffee on my uh, coat or something. <laughs> <But> like, uh, <laughs> occupational hazard, there was. Yeah, of course. Occupational no, hazard. No, and I get that. It's just, it was something which struck me a few years ago. I was like, oh, all those hundreds of pounds worth of clobber just. <laughs> it, 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 there's, um, there's a saying, one upmanship. Mm. Um, the dressing game was all about one upmanship. Yeah. And um, one, of the, uh, one of the things for me would say if I saw a rival. Um, football lad, and if you know, if we were going into a row or something, and um, they'd have a they'd have a court that I wanted, I'd be more fuming about that, you know. <laughs> Who do you think <laughs> was the well, it was the best dresses that you sort of come up on, come against? It's, it, 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 it's tough to say. Um, was there? Would you ever like remember kind of coming up against someone and going? I like that coat. Yeah, well, Cardiff were always smart. Um, they always had the, you know, um, groups that um, were, were really well dressed and clued up. But everyone did all around the country. But mm. when you're talking on mass, you're probably talking about Arsenal, Portsmouth. Um, a bit later on, but yeah, Portsmouth, we played them in a friendly in 1990 in Indian Park. And for some reason, Probably the police didn't realise how many pompey were coming, mm. and there was no segregation in the grandstand. So I think it's about two of us in there. Um, me, me, and I think Gary, my mate, he's in there a few times. And uh, these boys come in then, and it was all, um, yeah, it was all nice t-shirts, shorts, long hair, you know, stripey, uh, pastel colours, mm. and you know, straight away they. They were Portsmouth, yeah, and uh, yeah, recognised some of the labels. Stone Island, all the three labels were, were being worn. A uh, lot of Ralph Ren, I remember, but it was um, as we found out then later, the Portsmouth were they they were on it early. Mm-hmm. You you go if you go back, you go on any internet site, and um, you can see Pompey everywhere. On um, uh, it, it, it's a standing joke that they had their own cameraman, and <laughs> he. Um, but he did. He, he took he took some cracking photos, but mainly it was like the um, uh, that early eighties period, which for me it didn't it didn't even compete mm. to when you get into eighty six, eighty seven onwards um, in the dressing game. Didn't even compete. But yeah, Port, like I said, Portsmouth, uh, Arsenal was smart. But then every, every everyone had their own um, identity. Yeah. Different styles. Most things. of the top mobs, yeah, yeah. It's interesting. It's, uh, do you reckon we'll see a, a magnetic follow-up part two, something like that? Maybe. But let's get this one sold. Yeah, for this no, one. No, yeah, yeah. But no, it'd be, it, you know, it'd be nice. Do you think you would literally like move it on to sort of just for the next, like obviously it was A6 to 93, and then would you go? Like ninety four to wherever, or would you probably um, not stick with? I don't think it'd be as interesting. No, um, we we've got quite a lot of source material um, from when 
uh, Osti started um, left hand in '93, which you know we could have we could have uh, brought out a book on probably, mm. but no, not at the moment. But I did say I, I've been saying for a while to James. I said um, when when the book is published, I guarantee you there'll be other people coming on to us and saying. Uh, oh, we had this. Why didn't you use this? Uh, uh, it's too late now. But yeah, we have had people approach us already, saying that, um, and and by it's the look of it, some real, real nice archive yeah. material. So who knows? Maybe, maybe, um, maybe a maybe, maybe one day we'll see. It, you know, we could uh, uh, we could republish it with extra, um, you know, extra chapters. But get this one done first. Hundred um, percent. So. For people who would like to uh, to buy the book, I will put the email address in the description below, but it's also going across the bottom of the screen right now. Thank you. Um, in terms of reading it, like I said, obviously I only got it off you on Saturday, so I haven't had a chance to fully get into it, but I also had tremendous trouble making notes this morning because most people I just get sucked me. into it and I was like, yeah. I couldn't flick through it. it was too most people so far have said they're keeping it bit at the time but you know a lot of people have flicked through it i've had comments from people who said they can't put it down yeah. uh, some people are saying you know then a quarter of the book um they were up until three in the morning yeah which is nice you know yeah, with, um, I, um, yeah, yeah. well i said to you earlier i said to becky i said i'm gonna just I'll sit down here for an hour and i'm gonna make some notes for tonight and then she come down about two hours later and she was like what are we doing Still making notes of it. Yeah, it's yeah. got like pages and pages of it. But sorry, sorry, was so in depth. Like, no, no, it's, it's awesome. But like you um, said, yeah, we could talk and talk for days on it, couldn't we? Yes, indeed, mate. So I'll, I'll obviously I'll put links and everything, email address and all that stuff. Uh, most of all, mate, I really appreciate your time. And um, no, like guys, I always, down. I always said from day one, and I wanted you to be the the first podcast because, uh, um, you know. We've because uh, I'm a fucking legend. You are, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I couldn't put it better myself, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, but no, I'm in the book, mate. That's, that's my claim to fame now. Isn't exactly. It? I was uh, no, I was uh, very eager that I showed my kids to come in. Your own number one content um, person. I don't know what uh, what's the terminology. I'm not sure, mate. Video. Come on, you will have one. I'm new. <coughs> content, content, <laughs> content creator. Yeah, yeah, content creator. So, yeah. So yeah, I do a bit of everything. Did I at the end of the day? Live events and content creation, and podcast. Fantastic. Presenter, editor, bit of everything. But uh, look, it's been a pleasure. A jack mate. of all trades. Yeah, that's it. But I've got to say, I um, I thoroughly enjoyed making the trailers. I was also very pleased that you asked me to do it, and no, no. I'm even more pleased that you've come down. Hopefully, the hopefully there'll be uh, more to follow. Indeed, mate. Um, ladies and gentlemen, author Tony Rivers. Thank you very much. Thanks, mate.